Many introverted characters in pop culture are accepted and celebrated for their introversion. However, introverts in the real world don't experience that all the time. Kind of like the opening musical number in Beauty and the Beast, where the entire village is making fun of Belle, introversion can be seen as a problem or social hindrance instead of a quirky attribute. In a society that seems to prefer extroverts, being an introvert can be challenging. Outgoing personalities are praised over soft-spoken and contemplative ones. Schools and our jobs are designed to cater to extroverts. Introverts are often forced to act like an extrovert. But what makes these two types so different? Many people fall on a spectrum, somewhere in between. Yet, we've assumed that these attributes depend on how a person relates to others. But these traits are linked to how you respond to social stimuli. Scott Barry Kaufman of the Imagination Institute explained the differences between how an extrovert and introvert brain engages in the dopamine reward system. Dopamine is a neurotransmitter that awards behaviors and encourages you to repeat them again. In a way, it's also responsible for the habits you create, but I digress. When it comes to introverts and extroverts, an extrovert's brain is motivated by social stimuli or rewards like food and social status. When faced with these rewards or the expectations of a reward, an extrovert's brain experiences more neurological activity. This activity is pleasant and motivates an extrovert to receive more social stimuli. For an introvert, the experience is different. An introvert's brain is more susceptible to dopamine increases and gets overwhelmed easily. This is why the introvert fizzles out when in social environments with too much stimulation. Introverts do not thrive with healthy doses of dopamine. They prefer acetylcholine. Acetylcholine is a slow-releasing neurotransmitter from the parasympathetic nervous system. It is also the primary reason why someone may prefer a quiet evening at home rather than being at a party. One theory posits that introverts may have more acetylcholine receptors than dopamine receptors. Putting aside neurological differences, neither introverts nor extroverts are better, and there is no such thing as a pure introvert or extrovert. As stated before, we all fall on a spectrum. Some just happen to lean more to either side, and few fall right in the middle. But why is it that we have to choose? Growing up, I was led to believe that being introverted was bad. People around me frequently misconstrued my quietness as shyness. I would often dread parent-teacher conferences because the remarks always were, she's a great student, but she needs to participate more, as if my quiet temperament was problematic. Teachers and adults encouraged me to be more assertive and outgoing. I knew I didn't have to be assertive to be outgoing, but I made the effort to follow their request. I spoke more during class, involved myself in more activities, and passed as someone who was overly social. In reality, I was tired. It wasn't that I didn't want to be social. I preferred to stay at home reading rather than going out. I ignored my instincts, and without realizing it, I was limiting my strengths. Known introvert, Albert Einstein once said, the monotony and solitude of a quiet life stimulates the creative mind. A 2016 study shows the relation of acetylcholine in learning and encoding new memories and information. So, when an introvert is in a quiet and calm environment, that's when they'll do their best in profound thinking. Western societies prefer extroverted individuals. Therefore, we assume that the person who speaks loudest has the best ideas. It's because of this bias that introverts are overlooked for leadership positions, but many world-respected leaders have been introverts. Abraham Lincoln, Rosa Parks, Mahatma Gandhi, Isaac Newton, Eleanor Roosevelt, and Charles Darwin. So it is often the soft-spoken person in the room who has the answers. Consequently, introverts make phenomenal leaders. Traits that define introverts like good listeners and not micromanaging make introverts good leaders. They give their peers free reign to work through their problems to find their unique solutions. Introverts can be passionate. They just manifest it differently. While an extrovert may be more vocal, introverts usually take the lead when it's something they truly care about. Unfortunately, introverts are forced to succumb to societal pressures. Everything in our society, from mandatory camera on Zoom meetings to forced group projects, work against introverts. But the world needs introverts as much as they need extroverts. As a society, we should encourage and listen to introverts because their ideas can change the world. How can we incorporate introverted personalities in society? Let us know in the comments. Thanks for watching. Until next time.